this is very difficult. We have already talked about it. To isolate one identity from the other identities, we have multiple identities. The same person, uh, you know, this is common observation. You are brother, you are student, you are some player, you may be a singer as well. So we have multiple identities. So when at workplace, you are at workplace, you have gender identity, you also have your professional identity. So how these two identities are balanced? This is the topic of this morning. You, the following interaction shows how gender identity is moderated by professional identity. Moderated means what happens? You have to compromise over one of the identities. And when you are talking about workplace, naturally, you will suppress your gender identity. Here, professional identity will dominate. How it happens? Let's see. The context, first of all, the context of the talk. It is elder care center where elderly people are taken care of. Highly feminized workplace. When you say the workplace is masculinized, feminized, it means feminine and masculine traits and features dominate that situation. It doesn't mean that men and women and women dominate that context or that workplace. It never means that. Masculinity and femininity, they refer to cultural traits and attributes which are expected of men and women. Okay, this place, it means here people talk in the style of feminine. They have to be polite, very caring, loving, like mothers, etc. Roles. The people involved in talk are Afeto and Frank. They are carers. They are employees of that center. And Ida is the person under their care. The masculine trait of aggression is balanced with professional identity as carer. Actually, this is the conclusion, this is the result of the analysis of the interaction. I have mentioned it first because I want to uh, give a background that led to this conclusion. And uh, to tell you how this masculine feature of aggression and assertion and authority is subjugated, dominated, by your professional role of a carer. A male is doing femininity, in other words. He is performing uh, like a woman. Lee, look this scene. Here, the person, the male person is the carer. Take it for a photo and uh, the old woman are the patient under his care. Now look the behavior of this person. This scene reveals all the things I have been talking about. Now see the dialogue. In leftmost first column, you see numbers. So when we discuss interaction, so we give numbers to every line. Because after analysis, when we discussed uh, uh, the dialogue, the interaction, we refer to line numbers. So that's why here you see numbers. Then in the second column, you see the characters, the participants, Afredo, Aida, they are participants, and then the dialogue. Afredo. So we are going back into the wheelchair or the lazy boy love over there. Ida, over there. Afreto, all right. 
they want an incident form for that thing. Here you see the sign plus. It shows very, very short pause. And this is what I have talked about, that uh, this type of symbols are used for transcription. This is transcription of the conversation. Ida, okay, of course. Now these slashes show that both utter okay at the same time. This is overlapping. Afredo, yes, Ida. I didn't even see what you do that. But you were doing it rather vigorously, obviously. Afredo, laugh, both laugh. Ida, did you see what he's done, Frank? Frank is another person. He is also a carer. So I would, to save time, I would lead you to the point here. Afredo, yeah. At the end of at this dialogue, number 33, line number 33. See, yeah, small pause. OK, anything else, Aida? You need anything else? No, usually we expect such kind of offers from females, from women. What is the conclusion here? That during their talk, the person who is under care, Ida, talks about something wrong that was done by Afreto. He smashed a light, I think, but even then, he was not aggressive and usually males become aggressive in such situations. But he remains cool and calm. He laughs with Ida. And at the end, when he leaves, at that time, he again repeats, he says, do you need any further help? Okay. This is how the gender traits, usual uh, gender features, are suppressed by the role, the professional role of carer. That is the topic of our module. Does workplace gender always align with gender order? Societal norms are stereotypes because in the beginning we have said that whatever we do at workplace at micro level, it is connected with societal level. So is there always alignment between the two or there is some deviation? Both alignment and contrast are possible. In the same interaction at the same workplace, see the talk between construction foreman Rodney and his client Darren. This is a short dialogue, again numbered Rodney and Darren. Workplace, both are builders. Rodney might take my t-shirt off or at least my shirt off. Darren, Darren, mom, Rodney, got that pink shirt on again? Bloody me. Darren, I think this is the same one actually. No, it's not. Darren, I think that pink, I think the original pink shirt is out there. Rodney, really? Still going? I've got a very pink one at home. Darren, this the original shirt. Rodney, oh, it's pink, dress, dress pink, mom, and laugh. Now, what is here? Pink color is associated with homosexuals. This person who is wearing pink, the other person points to that, that you are wearing this shirt. And uh, you know, the societal norm is heterosexuality. It doesn't allow homosexuality. So, uh, but the person is wearing pink and they are talking about pink and they are laughing. So it means they are deviating from the societal norm. But at the same time, the other person again and again reminds that uh, you are wearing this, get it off. So that means he is also, he is also inviting that uh, the other person's attention to the societal order. 
to both conflict alignment and contrast between the micro level norms and societal norms is taking place in this dialogue so we conclude that masculinity and femininity can coexist in the same situation and gender is dynamic we cannot confine it to boxes of maleness and femaleness